Hello and welcome to Sean's Test Bench. This is my first computer build on this channel. So stick around and I hope you like it. This build is titled Blue Crossfire. Blue because of the color scheme and Crossfire because I'm using uh, AMD's APU discrete graphics on their processor in conjunction with an AMD discrete graphics card. So in uh, theory you have dual graphics running to do all the graphical processing tasks it'll actually have two of them running and to do them tasks so it's supposed to be powerful we'll find out but uh, I started this build before I decided to launch a YouTube channel so you're not gonna be able to see me do the modifications that I've done to this case this was an old uh, HP compact but I did buy another case the exact same one and I'm gonna do another crossbar build uh, in a different color scheme so that I can walk you through all the modifications that I do to the to the cases. Uh, so we'll do that. You can check out that case that I just bought. Uh, it's what this one was. Uh, it's on my first episode of Mail Time. So check that out and, and you'll see what this used to be. Okay, uh, I'm going to clear everything off. You know what, let's go through a parts list first. And then I'll clear everything off and then we'll get started on the build. We're starting with this old case. It's a compact, uh, HP compact. Uh, they're old. They're, they're pretty old computers, so I don't know what year. Uh, they're just your basic uh, HP compact desktop computer case. Uh, then we're going to go with the Gigabyte motherboard. This is an FM1, uh, AMD's FM1 processor. This gigabyte board is an A55M DS2 motherboard. FM1, so it, it, it takes the APU processor instead of the standard CPU, it's an APU. Uh, then we're going to go with the gigabyte graphics card. This is an HD6670, one gig gigabyte graphics card. I got them just because they're gigabyte, so they match. The motherboard and the card's the same, same brand. This heat sink, I custom made the mounts for to fit this. It actually, these are made for Intel socket 775. I just fabricate the, the mount and make them fit any processor I really want to. They're nice eight pipe heat sinks. They're smaller. They're 92 millimeter. They're very quiet. They work very well. They're only about $10 on eBay. They're made for a Dell XPS 630 computer. So look that up if you're interested in one of these uh, heat sink coolers. We have four gigabytes of Patriot memory, four gigabytes per stick. There's eight gigabytes here. This is a six DDR3 1600. So there's eight gigabytes going in there. We have a LightScribe HP drive. It was the original one in this case. So I just painted it up and stick it back in there. It's a DVD burner with LightScribe. Uh, Western Digital Blue, 500 terabyte uh, hard drive. They're pretty, they're barely, Decent on performance for a mechanical hard drive. Then we have a crucial 120 gig SSD drive for the operating system. This will really make the, the computer respond quickly and just make it all, all around snappy when you're using it. You won't wait on programs that long or loading pages. And it, it, they really make your computer faster. We have remote control here. I installed uh, blue LED lighting in here and it comes with a little uh, which is a little module that controls the lighting. So that was added in the case. I think that does it. Okay, we have an Antec power supply here too. It's a 450 watt basic power supply. They're 80 plus. I trust Antec. Uh, they're not Corsair. They're not the best of the best. But I really trust them that they are not going to burn up a computer I put them into. So you can buy Antec power supply products as long as you don't buy their cheapest, cheapest one. Uh, you should be pretty good. All right, so uh, let me clear this off and let's get started on a build. So right let's start with the motherboard. I like to start with the processor. Just remove it. 
out of its socket case, you'll see a gold triangle on the processor. You'll find a corresponding triangle on the socket. You line them up. I didn't see the corresponding triangle, but it's there. Line it up. Just drop it in, lock it in. That's the processor. Now we have the memory, which was Patriot, and I painted it blue to match the theme. Let's pull these out. You'll see this, uh, it's offset, the slot. Just uh, line it up, push it in until it's all clicked in. Pull up the tabs, do the same to this one. There you go, it's installed. We're gonna set this aside. I'm not gonna put the heat sink on yet because uh, there's not a lot of room in the case for it. So, here's the case we're gonna be using. This is the old uh, compact, HP compact. Now the tools I'm using, this is just a cheap set of bits and screwdriver that I got from Walmart. It, uh, like six dollars it works it's got torques it has all the small very small stuff got a bag of mini tie straps needle nose side cutters razor blade in case i need to cut something a good klein number two phillips screwdriver also a bowl of screws that i gathered up i'll be using on this build uh, most of the boxes and everything I open should have their own screws in it so let's open this up Set this aside. Okay, I need the uh, need this cardboard. I don't want to scratch the case up, so I'm gonna use some cardboard here. And slide it into the frame. I marked on the table where to put it so it stays in there. Now you can see I just pull all these cables out of the way. Let's remove the front. These have tabs inside and a quick release button on the top. And the front cover comes off. Set that aside. As you can see, I painted the card reader in the front port USBs, uh, front panel connections. That's just to make it look nicer and match the theme. It uh, doesn't change the functionality one bit. This is that uh, little module controls uh, LED lights I put in the top and bottom of this case. So let's, uh, let's start by doing something here. Let's remove this wiring tray. These uh, cases, you know, factory cases, OEM cases I should say, they don't come with uh, any back panel cable management whatsoever. There's no re removable rear panel. So I create by making some kind of tray or uh, pan in the front of this case to hide all my wires under so I, I'm not looking at all the wiring so uh, that's why that's why you see I put these in there and I also drilled this one see in the smaller camera here uh, it's drilled for the hard drive it's gonna set there and the plugs are gonna come out of the top here and that's the hard drive tray and it covers all the wiring that I'm gonna be utilizing down here to plug into the motherboard the SATA cables the uh, LED lights, the fan wires, it's just going to cover all them wires up for me and hopefully look pretty good. So let's, uh, let's do something here. Let's pull out the power supply. Let me set this aside real quick. I'm going to have to do this quite a few times today. Setting that aside to get everything out. Now, the 
This power supply has been open before because I've been working on it. And then I packed it all back up in its original packaging so I didn't lose anything like the screws, power cable. But I changed something on this power supply. This label was not on this side of the power supply. It was on the other side. I put this on here to match the theme. So I wanted to keep the spec label, so I removed it to the other side of the power supply, and this is the side that's going to be shown when it's installed in the case. So that being the power supply, let's pull the case back up here and let's install this power supply. I want the power supply in first because there's a lot of cable wiring that's going to be run. And I need this in to start that. Now you slide it into its spot. And you should see the corresponding screws here. Which I'm going to have to tilt this up and you're not going to be able to see them. But I need to put some screws in here. Four power supply screws. It came with it. Just get them all started first. Don't uh, start wrenching them down yet. Get them all. All the threads started first. Computer cases and screws are they're primarily thinner metals, and. Uh, the screw bosses for your, your screws that are formed into these cases and the uh, hardware that comes with it. They don't really have to be torqued down all that tight. They're not, they're not going anywhere. They're not going to get, uh, they're not going <coughs> to be subject to a lot of torque and, and, and tensile strength stress on them. So you don't have to really wrench them down all that tight. You just don't want them to come loose or move. So there's the power supply installed. Let's get to the wiring here and uh, see where I want to route this. Now I modified a slot down here. It's been filed, sanded, and rounded the edges so that it won't cut the wiring. That's going to bring a lot of my wiring down here where I put that tray, or I made that tray to go into here. So, let me start by getting a 24 pin connector through and out of the way. Okay, before I go any further. Okay, sorry about that, my camera shut off. Uh, it only records for about 10 minutes at a time and then shuts down for some reason. So, where were we? Let's install all the cables are routed through this bottom here, so that's where they're where I want them. You stay up top here. So let's install the motherboard. Let's get that in. Now, I didn't have a back plate, so I made one out of plexiglass. It's not that difficult. Okay, I'll show you how I made it the next time I have to make one. I don't like to, but it's not impossible to make your own back plate out of scrap plexiglass that you already have, basically from uh, cutting windows out in computers. I'm using the original HP screws, they're I believe T15 Torx, if I'm right, I believe they are. Pressure forward into the I.O. plate. 
and the screws will line up. Snug them up now that there's about four of them in there. <clears throat> yeah, I didn't uh, install the CPU cooler because it's tall, and I was sure I can get that uh, this cover in. So I. Uh, left it out but that back plate is double-sided taped to the motherboard so it'll always stay there it's just a couple strips not enough to create a heat barrier or anything but enough to keep it stuck there as long as i need it okay uh, okay motherboard's in first thing i'm gonna do is start with a 24 pin power connector because it's the largest and it's usually the one that's in the way so, install that. I only have one need for this uh, floppy connector. So I'm going to go ahead and pull them back out into this area where I'm going to hide all my wire, most of my wire, extra wiring. And then I will just plug in what I need. I think that'll be better and less wire I have under this plate I believe the better because there's not a lot of room under it for me to uh, do this so that's plugged in that's my fans are plugged in and they have extra wire and room to move around if they need to then here's my SATAs. One's going to go to the hard drive in this tray that's getting mounted to this tray right on these four screws. And the other lead's going to go to a, a hard drive. I'm, I'm mounting an SSD here. So, bingo. This will be for the SATA power cable, will be for the DVD drive, and the floppy connector will be for this lighting module. It's going to be hidden with all this extra wiring. So here we have a four pin power connector. And we're going to need one of these. Not two. So I'm going to go ahead and leave them together. Or can't I? Let's find out. Yes, they can both live together right there. I see a couple spots for tie straps. So I'm going to go ahead and put that one in now. I'll do most of the tie strapping later, but I want to keep this out of my way. This is where small hands come in handy. I can't get it. I'm trying to stick my head in the camera, but I gotta see too, you know? Now I don't wanna wrench that down too tight either. So I'm just gonna not even snug it. I leave a little room so I, it can move around the tie straps on this wire. I just dropped that piece. I'll fish that out later when I tip it upside down. Just drop this one down. I'm going to cut this one because it just makes it look like there's too many tie straps in that area. There we go. Looks good to me. I don't know. 
this in. This six pin connector is going to just live down here into this tray because I will want it there in case somebody upgrades the graphics card and they need a six pin power for it. This will hold off on. The lighting wires in here. So everything's down in here. So I'm going to move this out of the way and uh, let's work on this hard drive tray thing. So let's move this, just slide it over. You'll be fine with me. It's a SATA. Now, I went ahead and made a flame cover for this. I'll install it later after the build, but for now, I want to install the graphics card. It installs here with the four screws from underneath. And then the power and SATA connectors come, whoops, i showing myself, I guess. Uh, power and SATA come through here. So, I believe these are the screws for them. Kind of hard to see them. That's why you don't snug them up until. Sorry, my camera shut off again. Now it's the battery. Uh, that's it. I'm getting a new camera. I'm done with this one. So let's go back to what we was doing. Installing four screws in this hard drive tray, plate, cover, whatever you want to call it that I made. This was a piece of plastic. This was the top of an old computer case. Had a plastic top on it. So I just, uh, it was salvaged from an old case that I stripped and threw away. So uh, I keep a lot of spare parts around just from stuff that, that I might be able to use or utilize in another build. And this plastic tray just seemed to be, just seemed to be what I needed. Now, the trick is, I gotta fit this down here. Before I do this though, huh, huh, what about my set of cables? Mm-hmm. Nobody said anything about SATA cables, did they? Okay. Let's get SATA cables ready. I have three here. I got a couple more off to the side there in case uh, one of these don't cut it. I clearly need a right angle for the DVD drive. Here, this one's long enough. Zero, one. This is a thing, so this is going to go on two. I'm going to go ahead and plug it in now just so I know how much room I have to work with. I believe that'll do it. Then I have this one. Hmm. Where's the other ones? Where's the other ones? I got them right here. Here's some other long ones. I didn't want to use this because I had white on it, but I might have to. Here is a one for the hard drive. Plug that one on there. Fisher down through. 
just like that. I think that'll be great. Yes, it will. And I'll stuff all the excess back under here. And that'll be fine for that one. I need a small one for... Okay, this will be it. This is going to be for my SSD. It will be on zero port. They got zero, one, two, and three. So this will definitely be on that port. And I don't need to put that in there. So let's let's put this wiring together here. Here, uh... Set a connector. Plug this in now. I hope I pulled this in the frame, huh? I'm still learning. Got a long way to go. Just bend this and get it ready to. Man, what a bugger. And she's in. This one comes out the top. This one stays up there. So let's try to get this tray in. That's going to be a uh, challenge, I knew. But that's why I did some of this this way. It's something. I need my other SATA plug there. Need that out. As you can see, this is not going to be the easiest. Definitely doable. That's all pretty much in there. I'm going to turn this around so you can have a better look. How about that, huh? Okay, I got all my wires hiding down there. I like that. This is going to tuck back up in there, not a problem. This can go up in there, not a problem. This will have to go over top. There's nothing I can do about it, but I'll bundle it uh, the best I can. all these wires and that's what we're going to do with them bundle them tip okay this out. I need that. Okay, let's uh, reinstall the DVD drive next. 
and then want to bundle up all these wires and clean this wiring up. Uh, it looks like I have both SATAs are in. I have the hard drive on number one. Zero is going to get the SSD. So number one is the hard drive. Number two SATA port is going to be the DVD drive, and there's an extra there's an extra port. Now in the future you can always put another drive up top here. Uh, just put it in a tray and hide your wiring underneath it. There's not that much wiring up there to uh, worry about. But that is what I come up with for my solution. So let me uh, take a break. Let me charge up the batteries on the camera. Uh, when we get back, I want to permanently fix this in place, that tray. I want to hook up the SSD and the DVD drive. So I'll be right back. Thank you. 